Okay, let's do a few examples about this lens rule and the Ampere's law. Well, suppose we have this region of constant uniform magnetic field. We put a ring in it, and by some means we contract the ring. This is a conducting ring, so it becomes a new, it has a new radius. So what will be the direction of the current induced? Yes. So initially you have this big ring, so you contract the ring in this uniform magnetic field. So what will be the direction of the current? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. Clockwise, clockwise. Okay, why clockwise, why counterclockwise? Okay, why counterclockwise? Okay. So you're, okay, how does the electron move? So why does the electron move like this? on circles. Any? No, you see, I'm not, ex I am the one exerting this force which closes the ring, shrinks the ring. I, I am exerting that force. It's the external force. So the elect you, if you want to think in terms of the forces, I mean, you see, in this problem you have all these alternatives, I mean, they should all give the same answer. You can just consider the forces acting on electrons. So if you want to consider the forces acting on electrons, so if you just pick up any electron, let's say some electron at this point, as the ring is shrinking, it is moving in this direction toward the center. So this will be the direction of the motion of the electron. The magnetic field is in this direction, so the electron will feel a force in this direction. Or if we plot it over here, if you take this one, this electron, no, sorry, it will be moving in this direction, so the force it will feel will be in this direction. So the, the current, the electrons will be running in this direction in counterclockwise sense. This is the electron's motion. So the current will be running in the clockwise sense. So this is one way of looking at this problem. Just look at the forces acting on the electrons. Now, another point that you can say, let's, let's apply the lens rule. Lens rule says that the, the, the induced current will be in such a direction as to oppose the change it creates. It. So what is the change that is creating this current? The shrinking of the, the, shrinking of the ring is what is creating this current. So the, the current should be such that it will try to oppose this shrinking, which means that the current, due to this current, there will be a force acting outwards on this ring. But if we want to have a force act, acting outwards due to this induced current, the current should run in the clockwise sense, because if you just take, let's say, this part, this DL over here, or let's say this DL over here, here we have a DL, then the force acting on this DL will be in this direction. So it will be opposing the force that is causing the ring to shrink. Or you can say, okay, the, the flux, what should be the positive sense of the, f well, let's say, the, what's the positive sense of the flux? Which direction would you like to choose for the DS? Let's choose the yes to be pointing inside. 
into the screen. If the yes is pointing into the screen, so is the flux increasing or is the flux positive or negative? The flux is positive because the magnetic field lines pass through this area in the direction of the S. So flux is positive. So is the flux, the magnitude of the flux increasing or decreasing? The flux is decreasing. So the flux in this bounded by that passes through the area bounded by this ring is decreasing. But since the flux is decreasing, the current should be such that it will try to increase that flux. Again, the current should be in the counterclockwise sense so that this induced current will create some additional magnetic field pointing into the screen in the direction of the S and hence it will contribute positively to the flux. So the, due to this shrinking, the flux is being reduced, but since the flux is being reduced, this induced current will in Add, add, we'll try to add to the flux and hence it should be in, this, in the clockwise sense so that it will create a magnetic field in the direction of the existing magnetic field. All these points of view are correct. You can use any one of them. Now, this also, we can also use directly Ampere's law. Remember what Ampere's law tells us, epsilon is equal to minus d phi b by dt. Faraday, sorry. Okay, this is Faraday. I always confuse the two. Now, phi b, you just said that it is positive and phi b is decreasing. With time, this is less than zero. And hence, Epsilon is positive. Now, epsilon positive, just use the right hand rule. Your thumb in the direction of the S, the S. Your points, your fingers are the direction of positive current, since epsilon is positive. So, again, it is clockwise. Now, any questions on any one of these approaches? They are all valid, and you can come up with more. And I would advise you to understand all of them, not just one of them. Magnetic flux is decreasing. It is positive and its magnitude is decreasing because the area is shrinking. And one thing to pay attention to, this, this EMF is not created by the magnetic field. It is created by the change in the magnetic field or it's not created by the flux itself. It is created by the change in the flux. If the flux is not changing, there is no EMF. There is an EMF only if the flux is changing. And the EMF is determined only by the change in the flux or change in the magnetic field. So the mag it might be the EMF, uh, let's say the, the thing is the flux might be positive or negative. In both cases, the change in the flux can also be positive or negative independent of the sign of the flux. Okay, let's do another example. Let's assume we have this loop. We have a region of space. And I have a loop in it with a uniform. This is the uniform magnetic field and I have this loop. Now what will be the flux? Let's say this is my angle theta. Now here, this ring has this shape. This length is, let's say, A, this is B. This is from the side, this is from straight up. Now, what will be the flux? 
Well, this is my ds. This is the b. It is uniform. This angle over here is, let's say, phi. Flux is nothing but b dot s. It is the magnetic field times the area, which is a b times cosine of phi. This is my flux. Now, if I want to find the EMF, this will be minus d phi b by dt. Let's say the magnetic field is constant. The shape of my loop is always constant. So this is minus b times ab, or plus b times ab, times sine of phi times d phi by dt. So if this, as this loop is rot, if this loop is rotating, it will create an EMF. And if you just connect this loop to a uh, circuit, there will be a time-dependent current running through it. So let's say that you, are, you rotate this loop at a constant angular velocity. If this is constant, then phi will be just some linear function of time. So you see you have this alternating current. So the alternating current, in a sense, is the easiest to generate as long as you are not using batteries. Using batteries, you generate direct current, but using such a generator, which uses a magnetic field and the motion, you will be most easily obtaining an alternating current, which will change its sign. Well, you can. Delta, then d phi by dt is just omega. And the EMF is nothing but B A B times sine omega T plus delta times omega, or epsilon max sine omega T plus delta. This is our alternating current. This is how the generators basically work. Of course, in a generator, you don't have one loop. You have many loops. If you have many loops, in each one of the loops, this is the EMF generated by each one of the loops. So if you have many of them, you just add them up, and you just multiply this by n. I'm taking the derivative with respect to time. The only thing that depends on time is phi. So I just use the chain rule. The derivative with respect to phi times the derivative of phi with respect to time. It is this angle over here, the angle between ds and b or if you like, phi plus theta is equal to pi over 2. If you want, I mean, from phi you can just move, go to theta. Yes. It creates an alternating current. So that's how we generate alternating currents. Well, it is the time when the EMF is zero, just any time. I mean, it changes how you choose your t equal to zero. If you change your t equal to zero, then this delta changes. It doesn't have really any effect. You can even set it to zero. Now, let's see. Let's just assume that this is my configuration at this instant. Phi is increasing. So let's say this is, this is my ring. This is my loop. At this instant, it is like this. The magnetic field is pointing in this direction. 
and it is rotating like this, what will be the direction of the current? It is rotating like this. So you are saying like this. Do you agree? OK. But let's see. Ds is in that time. So at this instant, at the instant that we show on this picture, the flux is positive or negative? So it's a positive flux. Is it increasing or decreasing? Hmm? It is decreasing. So the flux that passes through this surface from this side to this side is decreasing. So the current should be such that it should create a flux in the opposite direction. So it should create a magnetic field in that direction. So it should be like this. Do you all agree? So it creates a flux in that direction. Now, there is this current. I'm ro I will be rotating it like this. Now, there is this current already running in my loop. What is the direction of the magnetic dipole moment? So the, you see, we said that the current is running in this direction. Or did we do it correct? You see, what we said, this is the flux. The flux is decreasing. So we should create a current of flux in this direction to increase the flux. OK, so what is the direction of this current? OK, so if this is the shape, OK, the flux is positive if it goes like this, from this side to this side. The flux is decreasing. So the current should be such that it will try to increase the flux passing through this area. So it should create a magnetic field in this direction. So this should be the direction of the current. So it's like this. What is the direction of the magnetic dipole moment? Yes, it's, it's, it's per it will be perpendicular to this area, but is it pointing like this or is it pointing like that? The magnetic dipole moment. That is pointing like this. So this is the magnetic dipole moment. And I'm rotating my system like this. OK, so, so let's see what's what will happen. There will be a, if this is rotating like this, we said that the, mag the magnetic moment will be in this direction. So what will be the direction of the torque acting on this one? So will it oppose this rotation or enhance this rotation? Torque is mu cross B or B cross mu. Mu cross B. So does it oppose this rotation or enhance this rotation? So remember, angular acceleration is torque over I. Again, just remember Lenz rule. It says that the current will be such that it will try to oppose the change that create the current. In this case, the change is the rotation of this loop, this angular velocity. So it will try to oppose it. So it will slow it down. The angular magnitude of the angular velocity will reduce if there is no other external force. So what this means is, so let's, let's, let's just imagine you have this generator, which consists of many such loops. If you just take this generator and you don't connect it to any circuit, you can just easily rotate this generator. There, will, there won't be any problem. But when you connect it to a circuit, 
when you do not when you do not connect it to a circuit, there is no current running through it. Since there is no current running through it, there is no magnetic dipole moment. But when you connect it to a circuit, what will happen is there will be this back torque or counter torque. It will try to oppose you to rotate this loop. And you have to exert some more force, which means you have to do some more work, but that's basically energy conservation. Because if, there, if you connect it to a circuit, it means there will be some resistance in your circuit and they will dissipate energy, they will do some work, but that energy should come from somewhere and it is you who is doing this work on this generator or some burning fuel that will give some power to your system and this power once it is converted to electricity, it will be dissipated somewhere else. Well, if there's, if there's a current running in a loop, it has a magnetic dipole moment. It creates a magnetic dipole moment. The direction is, again, the right-hand rule. Curl your four fingers in the direction of the current, your thumb is the direction of the magnetic dipole moment. Well, let's see, if it didn't slow down, we have this loop, we put it in a magnetic field, we connect it in a circuit so that there will be some current running through it, and we give it an initial push. Now, if the torque help the motion, help the rotation, that means it will keep on rotating faster and faster. And as it's rotating faster and faster, it will be creating this current, which will be doing some work. And out of nothing, we will be getting some work done. So this is, a, I mean, Lenz rule is nothing but an expression of the conservation of energy, in a sense. This cannot be. It shouldn't be. So the torque should be opposing it. Well, you can also see it vectorially. You see, this is the magnetic dipole moment. This is B. So mu cross B is out of the screen. Again, if you use your right-hand rule, this torque will try to rotate the loop in the opposite direction. Now, this is the generator. Now, let's go back to motors, electric motors. Again, we have a uniform magnetic field. We have this loop. And the we, we send the current through this loop. And let's say that the, this is the direction of the current. So this is our loop, it is connected, it has some resistance, it is connected to a battery. Now things will be getting a bit more complicated. What is the direction of the magnetic dipole moment? Right hand rule, just wrap your fingers. You see the current is coming out of the screen and going on the top, it's going into the screen on the bottom. So the, this will, it will be in this direction. So in which direction will this loop start to rotate? Clockwise or counterclockwise? You see, the torque will be such that it will try to align the magnetic dipole moment and the magnetic field. So what will be the direction of rotation? It will be counterclockwise. You see, this is the magnetic dipole moment. The magnetic field is horizontal. The torque will, be, will try to rotate this magnetic dipole moment, will try to align the magnetic dipole moment and the magnetic field. Yes. I just connect it to a battery. This is an electric motor. So it will, the torque 
will be out of the screen. This is the direction of the torque, and hence this loop will rotate like this in this sense. At this instant, or alpha will alpha is out of the screen. Omega, the next at the next instant, omega will be out of the screen. Okay, any questions on this one? Let's see. I just connect it to a battery and there's a current running through it. Yes. Initially, I'm giving this current. I'm creating this current. So at this instant, is the mag what's it? let's just choose the ds also in this direction. This is the direction of ds. At this instant, is the flux positive or negative? The flux will be positive. Magnetic flux is positive. Is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. So initially it's like this, and then it will just move like this. This is the initial configuration of my electric motor. When I send the current through it, it's rotating like this. So the flux is increasing. So the induced EMF is negative. So there will be this induced EMF, which is negative. So which means it will try to create a current in the opposite sense. You see, the positive sense is the direction in which the, we have this current. So we have, since the yes and mu, we have chosen them to be in the same direction. The negative sense will be in the opposite direction. So the, if the induced current will, be, will try to move in the opposite direction, it will try to prevent the current. So effectively, the system will be just like this. We have this external. EMF. Well, there are some resistance in the circuit, both due to the, bat the battery and also our EMF source. And then we have this motor, which will just behave. It will just try to prevent this current. So as the motor is rotating faster and faster, this induced EMF will become larger and larger. And it will try to prevent this current. It will prevent the external EMF source to create this current. It is called the back EMF. It is like a resistance. The, the faster the motor runs, turns, the, fat, the stronger the resistance will be, the resistance to motion. So, so there are two things over here. One of them is if the motor, let's say this is the current running through our cir circuit, I is larger if the motor is not rotating. Well, there are a few applications of these things. One of them will be, for example, in, in the cars. If, if you notice, especially in the old cars, this was more obvious. If you, if you s try to start the engine with uh, the lights on, you see what you are actually doing there is you are starting a motor. A motor begins to rotate. but. Before it starts, it's not, yeah, you turn on the contact, the motor is not yet rotating. So it doesn't have this back EMF. It has a small resistance. So the current runs through the, it, most of it. It doesn't go to the lamps. So the lamps are 
the strength of the intensity of the lamps get lower. This is one problem. Another problem that well, let's say another problem that this might cause is, for example, if you have a motor, what do you use the electric motors for? In your daily life, where do you use electric motors? Okay, washing machines, dishwashers. Sorry. Okay, cars, toy cars, air conditioning, hair dryers. Okay, you have all these sources of uh, where you use electric motors. Now, if you turn on the power, if you give power to your electric motor, but somehow prevent its rotation, like you have the toy car, you just hold the wheels, or you have the air dryer, you just stick something to it so that the, the, ro the motor doesn't rotate, or in the wash dishwashers, etc., you have, you, there's something gets stuck in the motor so it doesn't rotate. In that case, since it is not rotating, there will not be a back EMF. If there is no back EMF, the current running through your motor will be greatly enhanced. If the current running through the motor is greatly enhanced, you have the risk of burning your motor. So that's one of the reasons why you are advised not to prevent the motion of motors when there's power on it, there's a, it's connected to a battery. You might burn them. It will heat up much more than if you just let it uh, rotate. Uh, if it burns, you will have smoke. So we just rotate the ba this battery, you mean? If we rotate, if we flip this battery, what will happen is the motor will be rotating in the other direction, hence the back EMF will also change its direction. Yes. It will always try to resist the current. The back, th that, that is why it is called the back EMF. It's like the back reaction to prevent the rotation. How are these, the external EMF and this induced EMF are related? Well, you need to know how fast the motor is rotating because this induced EMF will depend on how many coils you have, how, many, how fast the motor is rotating. It will depend on such factor, whether the motor has a load which will slow it down. It will depend on all those factors. So basically, it also tells you that if you put some load on your motor, so the motor, let's say you have some uh, light load on the motor, it will drive some current, there will be some current running through it, the motor will be rotating faster, so it will just move it with some power. If you put a heavier load, okay, with the same current, the motor doesn't take away, takes that much power. So with the same current, you cannot really lift that heavier load. But what happens when you put a heavier load, is that that heavier load prevents the motor from rotating. If the motor is not rotating, in that case, the, the back EMF will be smaller. If back EMF is smaller, then there will be a larger current running through your system. If there is a larger current running through your motor, its power will be increased. Since its power will be increased, it will be able to lift the, mo lift the load. Now, I didn't determine it over here. I determined the shape over here, and we just said that the induced current, epsilon induced will be negative, and hence the induced current will be in the opposite direction, or the EMF will try to cause a current to run in the opposite direction. So that's why here I just draw it like this. Because this battery, the external battery, is trying to run a current in this sense. The motor is trying to run it in the opposite sense. That's what we drive over here, this back EMF. Other questions?
This is a semicircle on the xy plane, and this is a semicircle in the yz plane. And there is this current running through this system. You can just imagine it as a full circle band in the middle. It makes a right angle. What's the magnetic dipole moment of this system? Now, you can just imagine this system as if there is a current running. The current is running in this direction and back. So you have the current, you can just, this, this over here doesn't really exist. There's zero current running there. But you can just imagine that zero current is if there is one current, this circuit is closed, this loop closes over here, and this loop is closed over here. The net current running through this line is zero. So you have these two planes, so you have this, loop and you have this other loop, each one has its own magnetic dipole moment and the net di magnetic dipole moment of the whole system will be just the sum of the magnetic dipole moments of these two semi-disks. This is the, net, the mu is nothing but the, the magnetic dipole moment of a whole of a system is the sum of the magnetic dipole moments of parts of it. So here, you can just divide this into two parts with, and you can calculate the magnetic dipole moment of each one of these parts. Then you need to sum to get the total magnetic dipole moment. Well, here there's a vector. <laughs> 